Happy holidays, folks. As you may know, I'm rather fond of hatchets and small axes. It's a versatile tool which allows for a wide range of bushcraft cutting tasks. So this Christmas, I asked Santa for a higher-end Swedish-made hatchet. While I did some research, the decision was largely made for me. The Grand Force Brooks Wildlife Hatchet was way above my budget. The Wetterlings Hatchet was not only above my budget, but also had some significant quality control issues recently. The Husqvarna Hatchet was comfortably within my budget, but after inspecting one in the store, I felt there were some basic design issues and decided to avoid it. So I ended up choosing the Hutteforce Classic Trekking Axe. This tool is supposedly hand forged by the oldest axe making company in the world and had top reviews on Amazon. But at $83, this tool is incredibly expensive. So today I wanted to share some of my observations on this hatchet. First, let's talk about the sheath. The sheath seems to be made of thick, high quality leather. The fit of the sheath to the hatchet head is very tight. It has a thick welt with brass rivets. In my opinion, both features serves to protect the sharp bit of the hatchet in the event that the hatchet is used accidentally with the sheath still on. This sheath uses a brass toggle and leather cordage to secure itself around the hatchet head. This system seems much more maintainable to me than the standard snap cap buttons found on many other axe sheath designs. In an emergency, I could fabricate cordage and toggles from natural materials. I certainly cannot do so with snap-on cap buttons. On the other side of the sheath, there is a loop for attachment to one's belt. I like this feature very much since it significantly reduces the amount of time it takes to deploy this tool. The handle of the Hotteforce trekking axe is made of American hickory and is approximately 15 and a half inches long. Now my handle did not come with any varnish on it, so I applied several coats of boiled linseed oil to preserve the wood. The grain of the wood is straight with tightly packed growth rings. There were no nicks, scratches, or imperfections of any kind in this handle. The grain orientation was not completely vertical. It was off by about 5 degrees. While not at all a big deal in terms of practical use, I would still expect such an expensive hatchet to have a handle with perfect grain orientation. With that said, however, the handle was incredibly thin. This feature should offer not only enhanced cutting power for the same amount of effort, but also many comfortable gripping positions along the entire length of the handle. Now, what shocked me was the insane balance of this handle. It is perfect. Having restored a hatchet myself, I know that this feat took tremendous skill and craftsmanship, especially since the hatchet's center of gravity is already disrupted by the aggressive design of the hatchet head. Speaking of the head, the hatchet head measures 5 and 3 8 inch in length, and the blade of the hatchet is just a shade more than 3 inches. At approximately 1 pound in weight, it is a Hudson Bay pattern head with ears that provide a firm grip on the handle. The major disappointment with the head was in the way it was made to the handle. It is clear to me that whoever pounded in the circular metal wedge was off, and this caused a piece of wood to flake off. I consider this to be a huge lapse in quality control, especially for such an expensive tool. With that said, the head features a perfectly symmetrical and very acute cutting edge. This cutting edge smoothly transitions into the cheeks of the hatchet head. Having reprofiled my old hatchet, I recognize this as a design feature to enable deep cutting capability without compromising splitting capability. However, the durability of this design hinges on the quality of the steel. Softer steels would cause the acute edge to roll after just light use, while hard, unevenly tempered steel would cause this edge to chip. So for such a hatchet to be durable, the steel needs to be of absolutely superb quality. Now, Hutteforce mentioned that the edge had a Rockwell hardness of 58, but they did not specify what type of steel is used in this hatchet. Speaking of the edge, it came on this hatchet with a mirror polish and was scary sharp. It sliced through newspaper just like a Mora knife. So I did some field tests today with my new hatchet. It chopped through inch thick green hardwood branches like butter. Two inch thick dead standing softwood was sliced cleanly through with usually one chop. The thin handle allowed for easy grip adjustments, making it almost effortless to switch between deep, powerful cuts and light, high precision cuts. The thin handle also seemed to noticeably reduce hand shock, 
when making hard strikes. I then decided to up the game and put this hatchet through the toughest cutting test in my part of the world, dead standing dogwood. Seasoned dogwood is one of the hardest woods in North America, 50% harder than hickory and more than twice as hard as seasoned red oak. It took several strikes to chop through a three inch thick dogwood trunk. This dogwood tree has such dense growth rings, it looks almost like exotic tropical ironwood. Splitting the dogwood was easy, even though the wood was riddled with super dense knots. It was a joy to do fine carving with this hatchet. The acute edge made incredibly fine fire feathers. The Hudson Bay design allowed for many precise carving angles. And the balanced handle made it easy for me to do fine woodworking for long periods of time without having any hand fatigue. After going through these tests, I inspected the edge again. I didn't see any chipping or rolling. Incredibly, after the beating it took, the hatchet's edge was still razor sharp. Altogether, this hatchet weighs 1 pound 13 ounces and fits comfortably within my backpack. While there are clearly some quality control issues with the way that the handle was mated to the head, the overall design and execution of the sheath, handle, and head were very good. So far, I like this hatchet very much. In the future, I would like to spend more time with this hatchet. Specifically, I want to see how well the steel performs over time and over varying environmental conditions, such as temperature and humidity. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please consider sharing it and also subscribing to my channel. Take care. Bye.